So the next row we're on is 26. So we've got to 25 blocks. Remember I said that 26 will actually be 24 blocks. Okay, so 24 blocks and then 23, 22, 21, etc. Down to one block here. Okay, so um, as you can see, I have circled 26. That's again where we're going to change the amount of bobbins we have. And if we look down here, it says for row 26. Then I'm going to have three white and two brown. So we're back to having our maximum bobbins again. Okay, so that's because we're bringing in another one of these, like, uh, what do you call it, a toe pad? Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, we're going to be doing this one. So every time we do one of those, we'll have an extra bobbin. Okay, so you're going to want your white bobbin and your brown bobbin again. And then we're going to start this row. I'm going to show you. How we start because we're going to start the rows differently this time we don't need to do the chain six anymore because that's to take us up an extra row um, but this time we're going to be coming down a row so I'm going to show you that technique now okay now if you have just been filtering on with this and you have not had a break you've not had a stretch then I suggest you just pop your hook down now before we start the next row just pop your hook down and just have a bit of a stretch stand up um just you know shake your hands out roll your shoulders a bit grab another cup of tea go to the loo whatever you need to do um it might look like i've done this video in one um sitting i haven't i have had breaks i have had stretches and um trips to the toilet so um have a, a bit of a stretch now and um, then we will continue. Okay, so are you all stretched out? Have you had a bit of a, you know, bit of a wriggle? It's easy to get your shoulders all hunched up, isn't it? So, um, okay, so we finished row 25 with five white blocks. Now, our next block is going to be above. So let me turn this around and show you what I mean. So this is the bottom, okay? I'm gonna take my hook out there for a moment. This is the bottom. So this is our chart. So we are starting from row 26, which is down here. Okay, I'm going to be working upwards. So this square here is what we last did, these five. And the next square is above rather than it's normally next to okay so we don't want to come out here anymore so no more chain six to bring us out here we want to come up so what we're going to do is bring this back around so we finished here what you're going to do is turn your work around okay so your hook and your loop is coming out at the top of that um, block. Okay, it's coming out at the top. And what you're going to do is slip stitch across because our next block is going to be in this part here, okay, where my thumb is. So we want to have our yarn coming out from here, okay? So we're going to do a slip stitch in these three double crochets. So slip stitch through and then go into the next double crochet and slip stitch and into the third double crochet and slip stitch and then we have our chain space here which is where we would normally slip stitch to join a block so I'm going to go into there and slip stitch and now if I turn it to the side our loop is coming out at the side of this chain three, all ready for us to do our chain three, and then our three double crochets as if this was an inside square, a mid row square. So there is your first block. So you slip stitch across these, and then you make your first block with a chain three. 
okay so I'll show you that once more okay so I've just undone that so your hook is coming out here from the end of the last block you're going to turn this around so your loop is coming out at the top of your stitch and then go into that first double crochet and make a slip stitch and then into the second slip stitch and the third we're just slip stitching our way across to the chain three and then it's the chain three so take your hook in there and do your fourth slip stitch so your hook is now in your chain three just as if you had a block here next to it and you were going to continue so you continue with a chain three and then your three double crochets just like so okay I will show you this again at the other end when we need to turn but that is how you're going to start this row okay okay so we're going to do five white blocks in total to start this row so I've done one there so I need to do four more so make sure you've got five whites to start this row okay then you're going to after your five whites you're going to swap to your beige and you're going to do nine squares nine blocks of the beige okay so do nine of those and then i will see you in in just a moment so nine blocks of beige done we're going to bring this white over and we're going to do three blocks of white. So bring this over just as before, making sure everything's nice and tight. And do your three blocks of white. Okay, so after three blocks of white, this is where you would look at your chart. And we've just done these three blocks of white here, and then you would see you've got two blocks of beige to do. Okay, two blocks of beige. So if you look here at your work, the beige is down here, and we need it here. So this is where you bring in your bobbin again. Okay, so bring your bobbin back in and rejoin. I've shown you how to join these before. Just check for the back of your work. So this is the back here. So I want the tail to be on the back. Okay. So normally I'd hold it over like that. But I'm going to hold it this side so that the tail is on the back. Once again, you can either pull through the loop or you can do it through the last two loops of that last stitch. And then drop that white down into the next block and slip stitch pull all those tails and yarns nice and tight hold on to that for your first chain and then you're good to go so we're going to do just two blocks of beige okay so two blocks of beige done and then if we look at the chart let me find my pencil we look at the chart here we've done these two beige and then we've got white to do here five white so if we look at our work again the white is down here so we're going to bring in our last bobbin of white again so here's my bobbin of white i'm going to bring that back in again just as we've done before and just as we did with that beige one just a second ago so again, because this is the back of the work, I'm going to have the tail this way, not behind, okay? And then pull through, slip stitch, and then pull everything nice and tight. There we go. And start your chain. So five white. So just to remind you, we're finishing the rows. Um, when we finish the rows, normally um, we've been doing um, kind of they look a bit like steps, okay? Normally we've been doing a block on top, okay? We do this and then we do one block on top. Um, but just to kind of remind you or to show you, 
when we're on to the decrease row, so the second half of the square, we stop next to the last block and not on top. So if you think you're a square short, even though you've got five, we stop next to. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the uh, um, how to how to decrease, how to turn it for the next row. So what we're going to do is slip stitch into that block to join, as always, and then you're going to turn your work around. And last time we did um, this block in the corner, but we're here now, and we want to start our next block next to this block here okay so we've turned our work in fact I've turned it the opposite way to how I prefer to turn so let me just turn this around so I prefer to have my yarn at the front of my work to do these slip stitches or it sort of tends to get all quite twisty which is so I'm going to go into this first double crochet and do a slip stitch and then into the second for a slip stitch. This is the block we just worked on, okay? We just made this one. Now we're coming back across it with a slip stitch in each of those double crochets and then into this chain space here, okay? And my arms have split. So into that chain space there, okay? So I'll show you that once more because I probably confused you by um, turning and then returning my work. So this is how it's going to go. Done my last block. And then I'm going to slip stitch to join to the next block. Okay. Then I'm going to turn my work around. And then I'm going to slip stitch in each of those three double crochets all the way across to the chain three space and in there and that now means that my hook is here ready to start this next block as I would if I was anywhere inside so I would start this next block with a chain three and then my three double crochets Okay, I will show you that once more when we get to the other end of the row, um, and hopefully then you'll you'll um, have it and you'll remember how to do it. Okay, so we are now going to move on to row 27. So if you want to double check that you've got the right amount in this row, this last row um, going down will have 24 um, blocks. You can't count these sides now. These sides will always be 25, um, so you need to count the diagonal, and you should have 24. Okay, so we're going to start this next row with four white and a three beige. So just continue from there. Um, I've got my uh, chain three already, so I'm just going to continue with my first block. Doing those three double crochets. So do four blocks of white and then three blocks of beige. There we go. So now we're going to pick up our next white and we're going to do two white blocks and nine beige blocks two white nine beige so i have done my two white and nine beige and now we're going to do five white to finish this row so five white to finish this row remember you should finish next to this block so that's one two three four five perfect so do those five white and then I will show you once more how to do um, the turning for starting the next row. Five white. So there's my five white done and now I'm going to show you how to turn your work and do those slip stitches again ready to start the next row. Um, so I'm going to turn your work around and I like to turn it this way around so that I've got my yarn at the front. I find that you have less bulky um, part here. Um, so I've done my slip stitch into the block next to you. Um, so turn my work and then I'm going to slip stitch into each of these double crochets that I've just made. So into the first one and do a slip stitch. Into the second and a slip stitch. Into the third. Flip. 
and then into the chain space. Slip stitch and now that's as if you've slip stitched from the block next to it. So you've got your yarn in exactly the right place to start with a chain three and then do your three double crochets. And you're going to do five white blocks along this row. Five white blocks. Okay, so now um, I've done my five white. I'm going to do eight beige and two white. Eight beige and two white. Okay, so after the eight white, uh, sorry, eight beige and two white, you're going to do four beige and then three white. Four beige, three white. And I will see you again in a moment. Okay, there we go, four beige, three white. Turn your work around. Slip stitch back across those three double crochet. And into the chain three space. And then you're gonna start the next row, row 29. Row 29, you're going to do two white blocks and one, two, three, four beige. Two white and four beige. There we go. So we're now going to do three white and six beige. Three white and six beige. Okay. I've just done, um, just done six beige. And now we're going to finish up this row, row 29, with six white blocks. So this white block, um, this white strand is two blocks away. So we're just going to carry that down and do our slip stitch into the next block. And we're going to make sure that we pull this a little tighter than we expect to, than we think we need to. So. We did this once, uh, oh, way, way back near the beginning. Um, so just a little tighter than you think you need to. And then do your chain three and then work your stitches over this piece of yarn here. So you're going to work your double crochets around and over that piece of yarn so it just gets um, hidden inside here okay and then you've got this bit here so you're going to go under there do your slip stitch and then continue as before oops I'm going to work over that piece of yarn oops I didn't do that so through the chain space and the piece of yarn to work that in there my bobbin oh almost empty there so there we go so that piece of yarn now is between inside these two blocks okay so continue and do your six blocks of white all the way to the end and I'll see you back for the next row when we can get rid of some bobbins again yay there we go, row 29 finished. So we're on to row 30 now. I'm just going to bring the chart back in and show you. If you see here, row 30, I circled. So that means I've got a note about bobbins again. So if I look down here, it says two white and one beige. So I can get rid of one of my bobbins. Which one can I get rid of? Let's have a look. So this one that I've just finished on, just here, is going to go around to this row. And it's going to go up, 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 up. Oh, it's going to keep going all the way up to this beige here. So it's this middle white bobbin I can get rid of. So I've actually already done that because I needed the yarn <laughs> um, to wind on for a bobbin for later. So if we look, we have this one at the end, we have this one at the other end, so it's the one in the middle, this one. So I've cut it off and left a tail for sewing in. So there's my middle one. There we go. So I've just kind of made a new bobbin because I had to start with some new yarn. So there we go. So 
we're going to um, set that aside until later and then we're going to continue working up for row 30 and we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 white blocks. There we go, 14 white blocks, a nice long continuous row, you can just keep going. Okay, so 14 white blocks. Don't forget, you're going to turn this around and you're going to slip stitch back across and into that chain space. And then continue and make your 14 white blocks. Now, I'm just part way through my white, um, my 14 white, and um, I forgot to tell you, uh, you might have realised already when you get to um, the area where this beige is coming from, that we've actually finished this big portion of beige. So this, this bobbin here in the middle is finished. So we can take that away. Yay! All we've got left of the beige is this small part up here and then these two. Okay, this big part is done. It's like an upside down heart actually. I've just realised that. Hey, that's cool. An upside down heart. There you go. <laughs> okay, so if you want a heart pattern, turn it upside down and there's a heart. Okay, so I'm going to leave you now to continue with um, your 14 white. So after 14 white, make sure you counted that you have got 14. We're going to do four beige, four beige and two white. Okay, done those two whites, so turn your work, slip stitch across and then make one white and four beige. One white and four beige. So one white, four beige, and now we're going to finish the row with, oops, what's happened there, we are going to finish the row with 14 whites, 14, and then you're going to start the next row with 14. So 14 white, turn, slip stitch, and 14 white to start the next row. See you soon. So when you've done those 14 one way and 14 back, along the start of this next row we're going to do three beige and one white three beige one white and then one white at the start of the next row okay if you can remember all that three beige one white and then one white to start the next row okay and again i will see you soon Okie dokie, so I've done my one to start this new row, one white. And now we're going to do um, two beige and then eight white. Two beige and then eight white. Okay, so when you've done those eight white, you are going to bring in your other um, bobbin or ball of your beige or whatever colour you're using instead of beige and you're going to join that in for the next part of your square and join that in for the next block. So there we go, we're going to make just two beige on this row, just two beige for this one, and then we're going to do four white, and for that white you will need to bring in your third bobbin of white, okay? So with this new bobbin of beige we're going to do two and then four white with a new bobbin of white, okay? Two beige, four white. Okay, so the next row, row 34, you are doing amazingly if you've got this far, well done. Um, 
row 34, we're going to do three white, three beige, three white. To start with, three white, three beige, and three white. Okay, so we've just done three white, three beige, three white. And um, we're going to be introducing um, another bobbin of beige. But in order to do that, I forgot to tell you, this bobbin down here, so at the other end of this row, we've finished this little um, toe pad, as I call it. So leave a tail and chop that. And then we're going to bring this one in just here. I've just chopped the wrong tail. No, I haven't just chopped the wrong one. Oh my gosh, I'm getting myself confused. Where are we? Okay, it's this one. Here we go. So I'm going to bring this in and use just here. And then we're going to make two beige blocks and then five white blocks. So two beige blocks with this new bobbin and then five white. So I will see you when I've done these. So I'm just going to bring this tail to the back and join this in as I've done before. So I will see you soon. Two beige and five white. Okay, if you have just done your two beige and you're like, well, where's the white to start the five white? I don't have any white here. Mm hmm. Forgive me for not telling you that also this white at the end of this row, we chopped off this beige one. The white next to it is also finished. So again, leave a tail and then we can use that bobbin. Okay, so when you've done these two beige in this row, you're going to bring this white in and do the five whites with this new bobbin. Okay, so apologies for not telling you that one, um, but there we go. Um, we have it now, so off you go, doing those last five white, and then do four white to start the next row. Okay, so I've got the first four at the start of this next row. Um, first four white, and then I'm going to do three beige and two white. Three beige and two white. Okay, and now four beige and two white. Four beige, two white, and two white to start the next row. Four beige, two white, and two white. So how are you doing? Um, I have finished those two to start um, my new row. Um, you might notice that the lighting is a little different now um, because for me this is actually a new day. Um, I stopped what I was doing and eventually went to bed um, early hours of the morning um, and uh, thought I'd finish up today with this um, lovely graph. So. Um, it's all a bit different this morning, um, looking a little different in colour, but um, that's where we are. That's because I've um, come back the next day. So we finished, um, we did four beige and two white, and then we did two white to start the next row. So this is row 36 that we are now on, and we are going to do four beige one white and four more beige. So four beige, one white, four beige. So we've done four, one, four, and now we're going to do three white, turn and do two white to start the next row. So three white and then two white. And once you've done those two white on the next row, you're going to do four beige, two white, and four beige. Four beige, two white, four beige. So when you've done that four, two, four, you're going to do one white, turn, and do a white to start the next row. 
So a white on this row and a white on the next row. And after that one on the new row, we're going to do again four beige, one white and four beige. Four beige, one white, four beige. And after those four beige, we're going to do two white on this row and one white to start the next row. Two on here and one on the next row. So I've got the one white to start this row and then I'm going to do four beige, two white and three beige, okay? Four, two, three. And then you're going to do one white to finish this row and one white to start the next row, okay? One white, turn and then another white. Okay, lovely, lovely, lovely. So when you've started this new row with your one white, we are going to change to beige and do two beige, three white and three beige. Two beige, three white, three beige. Two, three, three. There we go, two, three, three. Finishing with three beige. So we're going to finish this row with one white. We're going to start the next row with one white and then I'd like you to do two beige and then it's all going to become so much simpler. So one white, turn, one white, two beige. One white, one white, two beige. Okay, now when you've done that one white and two beige for the start of this next row, um, this row, which is row 41. What I want you to do is, I'm just going to take my hook out of there. Now the only bobbin, the only yarn we need now to finish up is this one white in the centre. So what I want you to do is find your white that's next in line to work with. So this is mine here, so find that one. Okay, find that one that you're next going to work with, pop that securely away from everything else, and then you are going to snip off all the other bobbins and ends of yarn. So this beige that we've just worked on, I'm going to leave a nice long tail for sewing in, and then I'm going to get rid of that one. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of this white at the top. Again, leave a nice long tail. Oops, that's this one here. So let's move that one out of the way. And then this one here. Snip. And we've got a beige one here. Snip. All of those are finished. We just need one white. Now I might not have quite enough on this one but I'll use up the rest of what I've got. So just this one white we need now because I'm going to show you the graph and zoom in. Okay so we've done these two beige here. We're on this row. We've done these two beige and now we've got six white to do and then we're going to go on to the next row and then we've got eight white and then seven, six, five, four, three, two, one to the final corner. So this is all we've got left. You've made it this far. Give yourself a pat on the back. Have a stretch. Have a stretch. Put all your bobbins to the side. Get rid of those. And um, let's finish this row we're on now with six white. And then I'll um, help you to know how to continue for the rest of this square. Okay, so finish this row with six white and then I'll join you back. Okay, so I've done those six white on the end of that row. And now this is where it becomes so simple and it becomes a bit like um, the beginning when we started um, down here with um, just plain white rows. So what you're going to do is turn your work, um, do your slip stitches across, and then you're going to do eight white blocks. And then you will turn your work and you'll work seven white blocks, turn, work six, turn, work five, then four, then three, then two. And then your final one block in the top corner. 
Okay, so I'm going to leave you to work those rows. Just remember you're working one less square every time and you should be finishing next to the um, block of the last square. Okay, so eight blocks on the next row and then seven and so on. And I will see you for the last square. So I'm just finishing up my last square in that top left corner. And how good does it feel to be on your last square? So join that there. And now you have a choice. You can either fasten off here or if you prefer, you can turn it and then you can slip stitch across so that your um, yarn ends in the corner. Um, personally, I have no preference, so I'm just going to fasten off here. So to do that, you're just going to make a knot the way that we would um, when we're uh, crocheting normally. So just going to um, yarn over, pull through, as if I was going to do a chain, pull some yarn through and snip and pull and just tighten that off. And that's the last square. Yay! How good do you feel right now? I know I feel so good for having finished it. So, so good. Um, I will move the camera so you can see the whole square. Um, but for now, here we go. Four little toe pads and the big pad in the middle. There we go. Now, um, I'm going to... Oh, excuse me. Um, so... I've got a couple of um, ends of yarn here that are on the front. So as I showed you before, I'm just going to take my hook and pull those through to the back. It's nice and simple. Okay, now all my tails are on the back and this is my square. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right. Okay, so I'm going to try and lift my camera up. As I told you before, it might be a little wobbly because I'm manually lifting it, not um, well, with the tripod. So here we go. There we go. There's the whole square. How good is that? Love it. Love it. So as you can probably see, if I go a bit higher, this corner is kind of angling up a bit and this corner is coming down and the whole thing sort of on a slight slant now that's because we've worked diagonally so if you can see again at the top it's higher here and lower there so it's sort of um is it a trapezoid or something so i'm going to pop this camera down and sort it out there we go so all you need to do is just put two hands on I like to put one in opposite corners where it needs to um, go higher and lower so these are the two uh, this is the high corner this is the low corner so all I'm going to do is that okay and then a bit more in the middle and just do that okay so I'm going pushing it opposite ways and that now here we go again with the camera that you can probably now see is much squarer and that's all it needs just a little bit of a pull on the opposite corners and there you go okay so let's pop this camera down so that as I said is all you need to do um, to make it square if it's a little bit sort of out of shape and as I said that's only because we work on the diagonal so we're sort of constantly having our work sort of pulling um, opposite corners okay so that I think looks pretty awesome I'm going to show you the back now with all the tails oh oops sorry they're hitting the camera so there we go now there aren't too many tails here there's not been too many color changes so this is quite quite a good one sometimes people have absolutely hundreds of tails to sew in so all you need to do now is grab a needle sew these ends in and um, it is a bit different to sewing into normal crochet and that you don't just sort of have a row to go along and go all the way and then back again so all I would say is take your end and you can sew through the bottom of these stitches here 
okay and then you can come back again and what I would say is just kind of go through and just keep changing direction come back on yourself and just go in lots of different directions and back on yourself just to bury these in a long way and um, because as you can see this does move um, so and often these are going to be used as blankets or cushions or something and they're going to get some sort of pulling around so make sure that this is in there sort of one way then another then another so that whichever way it's pulled it will be stuck in there and secure so just take your time weave those in and congratulate yourself if this is your first corner to corner big congratulations and um especially if this is your first corner to corner and um that you've done a graph for your first corner to corner fantastic well done um and if this is your first graph as well well done as as well indeed well done well done awesome job so i really hope that you found this um rather long video um or videos <laughs> Um, helpful I did say I was going to take you through step by step the whole way and um, by gum did we go the whole way my goodness um, who knew who knew how long it was going to take but worth it I'm sure you agree so I hope you found this useful and helpful um, please leave any comments questions queries um, anything in that comment uh, part right down the bottom bottom of the page um please give us a thumbs up by clicking that like button if you um have found this helpful useful and you've enjoyed it and um yeah come and join the facebook group and upload your photos i would love to see the photos of what you've done with this um can't wait to see your work on this um graph and what colors you've chosen so until next time, just keep hooking, have a really good stretch and don't let your tea get cold. <laughs>